Uh, today I want to introduce my uh, audience, uh, a very professional person and his field. How long you in your field work? This would be my 25th year. 20, yeah, a quarter of century, right? Correct. Uh, his name is Roger, okay, Archibald. And uh, I would like to ask some question about what he doing. Uh, when he came in America, because I didn't feel it that he came in America. He <laughs> looks like he born uh, in America. You born in America? No, no, I was not born in America. Okay, tell us. Actually, I was born in the Caribbean. I was born in one wow. of the Caribbean islands uh, of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh -huh. And I came here as a young man okay. um, and attended high school. Okay. And uh, in high school, I went to boys and girls high school right uh -huh. here in Brooklyn. Okay. And after high school, I went on to Brooklyn College again, right here in wow. Brooklyn. Okay. And after some time after graduating from college, I went on to law school. I went to Brooklyn Law School. So I did everything in Brooklyn. I'm wow. really a Brooklyn boy. So how how many years you spent for education? <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> let's see. Four years of high school. Okay. Four years of college. Three years of law school. And tell me a little bit, during the college, before you uh, attorney, right, before take law, what you do, what you done? Oh, well, in college I, I majored in, well, I had two majors. Uh -huh. One was speech. Okay. And the other one was broadcast journalism. Um, oh. There was a point that I aspired to do what you're doing now. Uh -huh. uh, I wanted <laughs> to be a journalist. And okay. um, that was a lot of fun. Um, I produced and wrote and mm -hmm. directed television scripts and what have you. But something about what I was doing sort of propelled me in the area of law. Because when mm -hmm. you think about law, it covers virtually everything. There's a law for virtually every single discipline in life. There are laws and rules that govern it. And I just needed to get an understanding of what those rules were so I could then impart that knowledge to my friends, my family, and the population at large. And your bi biography, you even was like a salesperson, right? Correct. Tell me something. Is, is this is was help I, for your career? Absolutely. Um, before going to law school, um, well, most people usually have a direct track between mm -hmm undergrad and law school they go directly mm -hmm. I didn't take that route um, mm -hmm. I decided to work first um, so I had a job in the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. marketing pharmaceuticals for diabetes for high cholesterol mm -hmm. high blood pressure and things of that nature and my job was to go to the various hospitals mm -hmm. and doctors offices in and around Brooklyn and convince them to prescribe the brand of products that the company I worked for uh -huh. had um, so the dialogue on a daily basis between myself and the physicians and the nurses, I would be really prepared me for what I'm doing today because as a trial lawyer, mm -hmm. you have to interact with many different disciplines and have a comfort level with it. And I think that certainly helped prepare me for what I do today. Language, I, I believe, is a strong weapon? Or <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly have to have a good command of the, the, the language, and in this country that language would be English. Yeah. And a command of the language coupled with a command of the subject area that you're dealing with. Like mm -hmm. my firm, we have quite a few areas that we, we, we represent clients in. We do white-collar criminal cases. Okay. We do medical malpractice, okay. uh, personal injury. Mm -hmm. civil rights violations okay. and in civil rights some people say what do you mean civil rights well if you go into a department store for example yes and they refuse to serve you because of whatever reason they don't like the way you look maybe the, the color of your skin maybe the way you speak maybe your ethnicity yeah. maybe the fact that you may be a female or a male or what have you there are laws in the the, the United States that prohibit that. You can't discriminate against people based on those criteria. So mm -hmm. that's a civil rights violation and my firm would take the department store to court and get redress and financial compensation. Uh, can you tell me a little bit, I see you you cover like a certain a areas, right? And uh, also a little bit about what this is white collar crimes. No, white what collar is? crimes. Um, yeah. White-collar crimes are a very particularized type of crime. 
is usually financial related crimes. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, some of the difficulties we had on Wall Street where folks were convicted or brought up on charges for what is mm -hmm. called insider trading, that would be a white collar crime. Mm -hmm. And we do those types of Maybe cases. Because it's page is white? Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, I think they call it white collar because <laughs> the folks that usually commit those crimes are usually higher up in a company. Uh -huh. and, and, and in most companies, the supervisors and managers, uh, okay. are, they wear white collars uh, as opposed to blue collars. Ah, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue collar. Right. So <laughs> that's why it's called white collar crime. It usually refers to uh, financial type crimes like embezzlement, tax fraud, wire fraud, things of that nature. Okay, uh, another question. Uh, you said about ethnicity. We have like a, almost half a million Russian people. Can you work with like this group of ethnicity? Can you Absolutely, help absolutely. Um, anyone that is not, um, they refer to them as a WASP, and that stands for White Anglo-Saxon Protestant, mm -hmm. in this country is considered to be ethnic. Okay. So if you're Italian, you're ethnic. If you're Chinese, you're ethnic. Mm -hmm. If you're Caribbean, you're ethnic. Okay. If you're Russian, you're ethnic, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And the, the beautiful thing about this country is that if you look back at the beginnings of this country, mm -hmm. everybody that's here are immigrants. Exactly. The only native-born or people that's native to this land are the American Indians or the Native Americans. That's it. We are all immigrants. Be that as it may, though, um, under the law, if you fall into any of the ethnic groups, then you are considered to be in a protected class. And by being in a protected class, it means that the general population mm -hmm. can't keep you out of a job or a promotion or exactly. a raise because of your ethnic background. So, for example, if at a particular company there are 30 employees and two happen to be Russian yeah. and the rest are WASPs and all the WASPs get promoted, mm -hmm. all the WASPs get um, mm -hmm. some form of monthly or weekly increase in salary mm -hmm. and the two Russians don't get it, then that is a form of discrimination and we would look into that and make sure that the reasons that the management give for not promoting or giving the raises to the Russian is a legitimate reason. And most times it's not legitimate. It is not. And mm -hmm. when the court realizes that, then they, what we call, they craft a remedy. They either get you your job back, get you the promotion, get you a raise, mm -hmm. and punish the employer for committing an act of discrimination. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, what about uh, I see the international relations? That's what you were talking just previously about this, right? Or something like a corporator? How can how how it work? Okay, international relations. Well, one of the things about my firm is that we don't only practice law in the state of New York. Mm -hmm. I'm also licensed to practice law in the Caribbean uh -huh. and in any Commonwealth jurisdiction. So, for example, the Bahamas is a Commonwealth jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Australia is a Commonwealth jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. All of the Caribbean oh, Commonwealth jurisdictions. So my firm take on matters all over in the Commonwealth. And for example, we've had cases where there is a lawsuit or there is an action between a government okay. and a private individual. And we'll go in and we most oftentimes we'll be representing the government. We have represented thus far the government of St. Lucia the government of Grenada, and the government of Jamaica. So it all depends, and in these international relation type issues, there's usually some form of either a, um, a maritime sales contract, they're selling hundreds of tons of sugar or oil uh -huh. or some other type of commodity, and that's what we get involved in. We represent either the purchaser or the seller, or if it's a contract that was breached, one of the parties, either the party that claims the contract was breached or defending a party who they claim breached the contract. So that's what we do with international relations. It's quite exciting. Okay. Uh, 
May I ask you a question about some uh, photo I see on your wall? Cl Clinton, right? Yes, with Hillary Can you tell Clinton. Hillary Clinton. Can you tell a little bit about this? Absolutely. Well, that photo actually goes back about 15 or so years. Uh -huh. That was when she was actually the first lady. Yeah, she was the first lady at that oh, time. So you meet with the first lady at that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. <laughs> and she was running for okay. the Senate seat in New York. Uh -huh. Right. And um, there was a function here in Brooklyn for Brooklyn Democrats, and she was a guest speaker. And uh -huh. we had an opportunity to have a nice chat. And at the time, uh, the group that I was a part of, we supported her, and she went on to become you know, the first female senator from the state of New York, which made news, and then uh, being also the first lady to have done that, and yeah. I guess the rest is history, and hopefully she'll become the first female president yeah, of the, 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 the United States of America, and that would be very exciting. And then probably we get another photo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully we get a little bit more than a photo, but okay. we, we shall see. Uh, I see you have a lot of areas and you, I know, working hard. Yes. But can you tell a little bit about how you rest? When you, when you finish your everyday job, what do you do? Can uh -huh. you tell a little bit? I can tell a little bit. Well, I'm a tennis fanatic. Uh -huh. um, I love uh -huh. tennis. Okay. I play it at least twice a week. Mm -hmm. And um, my partner and I, we've been playing tennis together now for about 10 years, and I've wow. known him for about 40 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have some intense grudge matches. Wow. And um, most often, I'm the one that's on the losing side because he's so much better than me. But I enjoy playing with him uh -huh. anyway. Yeah, I do good. have my opportunities when I give him a good whipping, but um, those are far and few in between. It's usually the other way around. Okay. Yes. That that's that's very interesting. Okay. So, so that's why I see you you have good shape, right? Yes. You feel good and lose good. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh that's why uh sometimes uh court and I see how uh lawyer start talking maybe two, three hours without stop. Indeed. <laughs> how, how do we do you, that? Yeah, how you do that? Uh, well, most lawyers that I know are dedicated lawyers. They want to be lawyers. Mm -hmm. And the training that we get is very intense training mm -hmm. that prepares us to go into court and represent either side. And we do so zealously. Um, the preparation is intense and it's many, many long hours. So the preparation, once it's done, you, you, you don't have to refer to notes anymore because it's all in your head and it could just be what we refer to as a stream of consciousness. You're just having a discussion and when you're just having a discussion you can speak for hours on end because you already did the work, you did the preparation and that's the key to a good lawyer is one who is prepared at all times and when you say you're prepared it means you're prepared for any eventuality it doesn't matter what they throw at you, you are prepared because you did your homework. Okay. 